Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mei Mei. I'm together with my colleague Yu Ming. We are librarians and also speak today. In this lecture, we will introduce Enno, which is a reference manager, help for academic writing. During the class, if there is any question, please feel free to let us know. This is the outline of today's lecture. I will introduce parts one to three, and Yu Ming will introduce part four to six. First, I will introduce the citation concept to you. Then we will introduce the main functions of Enno, including adding new references, managing and organizing references, exporting references in your Word document, and so on. Let's start with part one. If you read many books and papers and want to use them as material in your report or thesis, you must know about referencing and citations. First, there are two parts of referencing. The first part is the in-text citation. It's inserted in the text directly after the information is sourced from the literature. The second part is bibliographic references. It appears at the end of the work and contains sufficient source information. In academic writing, it's crucial that you cite your source of information and ideas. There are two reference systems commonly used in scientific writing. One is author year reference system. This is the example of APA style. Here's the in-text citation, which includes the author's name and publication year. Bibliographic references is at the end of the article, and in order by author name from A to Z. Another is number reference system. The in-text citation is shown as number, ordered by appearance. Bibliographic references is at the end of the article, ordered by the citation number. In academic writing, we use a citation to demonstrate that you have read around the subject which you are writing about, provide evidence for your arguments, also allow readers to find the original sources. Moreover, avoid plagiarism. There are many citation styles, and different types of words have different formatting. If you do it completely manual by yourself, it will be very complicated. So you can use a citation manager or reference manager to make it easier. There are many citation managers such as Enno, Mendeley, Zotero, and so on. Today, I'm going to introduce Enno for you. I will introduce the overall function of EndNote. After you install EndNote, every file you create by EndNote is called a library. You can create different libraries for different purposes, like a library for your term project or your thesis, or you can create only one library for all kinds of needs. After creating a library, you can collect references into your library. If you already download many PDF before using EndNote, here's a PDF import function to import bibliography and full text at once. Or you can key in manually. More often, you can directly export references from databases. Key in and direct export will only collect the text of bibliography information like the author, title, and year. While the full text can be added by file attachment or file full text function. After collecting the references, you can organize and manage all the references in your library. EndNote can be combined with academic writing to cite the references you have collected. And it will automatically generate the citations and references format for you. This function is called Cite While You Write. The abbreviation is DWYW. Finally, you can share your references with collaborators through EndNote or share function. The first step in learning EndNote is to install. The latest EndNote version is 21. There are different installation files for Windows and Mac. To install EndNote, please go to our library website, choose the third tab databases, and search for EndNote. You are linked to the software download page. Log in with your NTU email account and password. 
on the software downloading page, just click Anno 21 Reference Manager and the browser will download the Anno installation file. Here are some notifications for you. Close all Windows software before installation. If you have a previous version of Anno, you should uninstall it using Control Panel. The next step is to extract the downloaded file by right-clicking on the zip file and selecting Extra All, uh, as the picture shows. This will result a folder with Anno 21 installation MSI and license bad file inside the Windows system. Double click the MSI file to start the installation. Notice that you must extract the Z file and then click the MSI. Do not just click the MSI inside the Z and don't move the license file out of the folder or it will be an unsuccessful installation and then click next through installation until this step. The default setting is typical mode. You can switch to custom mode so that you can find a drop down menu to choose entire feature will be installed on local hard drive to install all components completely. After installation, you will see EndNote in the application and EndNote toolbar in the Microsoft Office world. As I mentioned, every file created by EndNote is called a library. So the next step is to create a library. After launching the EndNote from application, the first message that appears is asking you to open an existing library or create a new library. Please choose create a new library. You can also create a new library by the tool above above. Click file and then new. Next, just like creating a new file in any software, choose the location, give it a name, then click save. You will see a new blank library like this. If you go to check the location of the library, you will see there are two files. One is ENL file showing the endno icon. The other is data folder. Every library contains these two files. Then ENL file stores your bibliography information. Data folder keeps your full text. Whether you want to back up or move the library to another storage, please remember that these two files must always be kept together. If you lose one of them, your library will be crashed. When you click and no, next time you can just click the ENL file to open this library. Next, I'm going to introduce how to back up your EndNote library. Save and back up your EndNote desktop library regularly to ensure you do not lose your work. If you want to back up, move or share a library. You must remember to move both files to your USB hard drive or other PC, or you may lose data. You may also try this compress library function in the EndNote. A compress library incorporates your regular EndNote library ENL file and its associated data folder into a single ENLX file. Just go to File, click Compress Library. This function can zip all references and data of the whole library. If you need it, you can store your compressed library in online or cloud storage and restore it to your desktop or hard drive. However, you must not activate EndNote in online cloud environment like Dropbox, Google Drive, or iCloud. This can eventually corrupt or damage your library. If you use Mac, you have the option to save the library as a single file by checking save as package. It will create only one ENLP file containing the library and the data folder. When you open your EndNote library, you will see the different panels in the library window just like this. Above is the toolbar 
The references you collected will appear in the middle. If you click one of them, you can preview the summary or edit it in the right panel. The left hand side is the group panel and then the search bar is in the upper area. And hotkey panel can help you do some functions directly. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to download and no installation file, also create a new library. Please go to our library website and click the third tab, databases, and search for EndNote. And click this link, it will lead you to the EndNote downloading page. Login with your NTU email account and password. If you are outside campus, please use VPN and switch to English page and then click download then select EndNote and click the installation file after you install EndNote then you can create a new library because I already have EndNote and I can you click file and then click new and choose the location give your name now you can see it. this is a new blank library. And you can check, you will create an ENL file and its data folder. If you need to back up or move the library, please remember to move both these files. Now we move on to part three about how to collect references. After you create a library, you can start to collect references. I will introduce three methods. The first method is key in manually. If you want to add references from paper prints such as reading lists of your syllabus, or websites, newspaper articles, government documents, and rare, very old, or unusual references, you can use this method. Click on References, then click New References. The next step is to choose the right or appropriate reference type. Select different references types where display different corresponding fields, such as the journal article where have the journal name, the volume, and issue number. The book where have the editor or a publisher. Take the journal article for example. After selecting the references type, the following step is to enter the bibliographic information into the corresponding fields one by one. The author field requires some special attention here. Take this journal article for example. Journal name should be typed as the last name followed by a comma and then first name. If there are multiple authors, enter each author's name on a separating line. If it is organizational union names, it must end with a comma, just like this. Then the year, title means article title, journal means the journal name, volume and issue. Some journals only have the issue number or the volume number, so you can leave the other fail blank. Once you have finished, entering information, click save, then close the references. Then you can return to your library and see the new references in the list. If you need to edit, you can click on the reference and switch to the add tab in the upper right for editing. If you have full text file, then you can manually attach the file to the bibliography record. You can use the file attachment function. There are two methods. You can select the references and switch to the summary tab, then click attach file. Or you can select the reference and switch to add tab. Then scroll down to find the file attachment field and then click attach file. Then find the file you want to attach. Click save and you can attach all the related documents, 
such as the full text in PDF format, reading notes in Word, presentation slides in PowerPoint, research data in Excel. Next time, you can find all these files by clicking the reference to see. As a reminder, these attached files are stored in the data folder. Suppose you take good care of your ENL file and data folders, all references and attached files will be safe. The second method to collect references is to directly export from databases. Exporting references is more convenient and efficient than manual entering references. Most of databases support this function, so I recommend you mainly use this method. Different databases have different interfaces, but the process basically includes three steps. First, select the references you want to export. Second, look for the export function. It may be called export, save, download, send to citation manager or RIS format. Finally, choose the export file format. Many file formats can be imported into EndNote. Usually, the easiest way is to choose the format that mentions EndNote or Citation Manager. Then click the downloading file to import the references into EndNote automatically. Please note, this will not download the full text or PDF, just bibliography information. Next, I will demonstrate some examples. There are lots of academic databases in the library. Please visit the library website, click the third tab, databases, mm. and you can type a specific database name or click the link below to browse all databases. The first example is Web of Science, which is the citation index for scientific and scholarly research. It covers over 21,000 peer-reviewed, high-quality scholarly journals in multiple disciplines. It also includes high-value journal indexes such as SCIE, SSCI, and AHCI. By the way, if you are interested in Web of Science, there will be a workshop next Wednesday, November 22nd. Welcome to attend this online workshop. Now I will skip some slides and go straight to demonstrate. Please go back to our library website and click the third tab databases. Then search the WOS is abbreviation of Web of Science. Then you can click this link. Link to Web of Science. Here's the Web of Science interface. Type your keyword and search it. So after searching from Web of Science, select the references you want to keep. For example, I want these three. And then next, I click Export. Then select EndNote Desktop, because now we are using EndNote Desktop version. And then check your selection. In record content, I will suggest you can select full record and click Export. A CIW file will be downloading. Click on it, and the references will be imported into your EndNote library. Okay. So the next database I want to introduce is PubMed, which is a biomedical database. So this time I want to search keyword biosensor. Again, check the references I want to export, then find the export option. This time you should click send to and choose uh, citation manager. Again, check your selection and create file. And this time an MBIB file will be downloaded. Just click on it. And again, and no, we imported these references. So the total references now is six. So the next example is uh, Google Scholar. If you want to 
export ref references from Google Scholar, you need to do some settings for the first time. So now just click the setting and then in the bibliography manager, please select and no. And then click save. So after the state setting, let's search the keywords. So now you will see a direct link uh, importing to EndNote show on each record. Then click on it. And then click the downloaded file again. So these references will be imported into your EndNote. And if you want to export multiple records at once, uh, you need to log in your Google account first. Then then click the star sign below, like this. And then go to your My Library in Google account, and then select uh, Export Old, select EndNote. And then click the file you'll be importing into your EndNote again. So as we mentioned earlier, export references from databases, you will only collect the text for bibliographic information. However, there's a way to get full text article. EndNote provides the find full text function to automatically search, download, and attach full text. So you have to do some first time setting in EndNote preference. Now, if you use a Windows system, you can click Edit and go to Preference. If you use Mac, just click EndNote logo and find the preferences. And in preferences, uh, please click Find for Text and then check these all four options. And then enter the URL of NTU library in the open URL path. So you can copy the URL from our instruction page. Again, go to our library website and click the EndNote page and link to the URL path for find for a text. So you will link to our uh, blog post then and you will find the URL in orange. Just copy and paste into the open URL path box. And after completing the preference setting, so you can follow the next step. So if you use this function outside campus, please set up VPN before uh, using, okay? Then go to select the references. And I suggest not selecting over 100 articles for five, four tags at a time because uh, database companies always detect their any unusual behavior on their website. And using the find for text function, uh, selecting too many references may sometimes be considered an illegal download. So, and then just right click and choose the find for text. And no, we'll automatically search the for text for you and the processing status is displayed on the left panel. And you can see the search result here. Found PDF means Enno successfully found and touched the PDF. The other status means not. But you can try the open URL link. So it may provide a URL link that leads to the PDFs. You will need to link to it uh, individually. Just right click the reference without full text and then click on open your link. So you may be able to find the missing full text through our library system. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, set out the preferences and also use the find full text function. Okay, so just Go to our library website and click the research support and find the EndNote. 
and click this link URL path for five four tags. And there's a URL in orange. Just copy it and then go back to your library and then go to edit preferences. If you use Mac, you can uh, click the uh, endnote logo and click find for tags, pass the link and then save. Okay, so uh, here are some references I just downloaded from Web of Science, PubMed, and Google Scholar. Now I want to find four tags through and no. So just <laughs> select uh, maybe five, this five, and then right click and click find four tags. So now Enno is searching four tags for me and it takes some time. Okay, you can see Enno found a PDF one article and the other four is not found. But you can still try the open your link we just mentioned. So just click open your link. So this one, ah, this one have PDF. You can link to the PDF and click download. And then attach the PDF into these references uh, we just mentioned. You can click summary tab and then click attach file. And find the PDF we just download. Try an, another reference. Click open your link and then ah, this one, the library also don't have the PDF file. So maybe you can try the interlibrary loan services to get the full text. Then next move on to the next method. The methods introduced earlier are first to collect bibliographic information and then find the full text. Now I will introduce the third opposite method, PDF import. If you already downloaded many PDF before using EndNote, you can use this function to import the bibliography and full text at once. The method works under the condition that PDF has DOI embedded. So if your PDF has DOI on it, after importing it, the bibliography information will be imported into EndNote library at the same time. So you can import a single PDF or multiple PDF files in the same folder. While importing, you will need to be connected to the internet. Take importing a single PDF, for example, just under the file menu and click import and choose file and find a file and make sure the import option is PDF and then click import. The PDF will be imported into EndNote. So you can see the uh, EndNote has also import the bibliography information. And you can also import the multiple PDFs in the same folder at once. Just again click file and then import this time choose folder, then uh, choose the PDF file. And if you have some folders and want to keep the original folder classification, you can tick these two options below. Again, just make sure the import option is PDF, then import. Now you can see all PDFs and bibliographic information are all imported into EndNote. So if you tick the create a group set for this import, you will see the original folder classification is preserved. But if Enno cannot detect the DOI, the bibliographic information will not be successfully imported. Uh, all it has will be an attachment to an empty record with the file name in the title field, as the slide shows. So you need to fill in the missing information manually by yourself. Okay, next I will uh, go to demonstrate. So uh, select file, then choose import. 
I want to import a single PDF, then I just select a file. Then choose the PDF. Okay, make sure the import option is PDF and click import. <coughs> so now you can see uh, and now import the PDF, also the bibliography information just like this. And if I want to import multiple PDFs in a same folder, then again, click. You can see this folder. Uh, I have the folder inside it. So I can just uh, tick these two options. Again, make sure the import option is PDF. And click import. Okay, so the Enno preserve the original classification. And this one, because the article is written in Chinese, so Enno cannot detect its DOI. So you will see there is no bibliography information, then you will have to key in manually by yourself. Okay, next, uh, powerful, that's welcome you mean to introduce. Okay, after collecting a lot of references in your annual library, on uh, this part I'm going to introduce some useful manager function. Uh, the first function is groups, uh, which is used to classify the references. A group makes it easy to organize a large library into subsets. You can create group by different topics. There are three different kinds of groups I'm going to introduce one by one. Uh, the first one is custom group, which is used to manually classify the references. To create custom group, please right click on my groups and choose create group, then give it a group name. After creating the custom group, you can select the existing references and drag them into the group. The references will be classified into this group. The second one is smart group. You can set a criteria to automatically classify the references. Uh, to create smart group, you can right click on my groups and choose create smart group. Then in a pop-up window, give it a group name, then set up the criteria. Uh, take this for example. Uh, the references contain genetically modified food or GM food in the bibliography. The information will be automatically classified into this group. The third one is combination group, uh, which is used to combine the existing groups by end or not. Uh, Right-click on my groups and choose create from group. In the pop-up window, uh, give it a group name and set up the combination criteria. Uh, take this for example, the references in biosensor group or in food science technology group will all belong to the new group final report. As a reminder, if you delete a reference in custom group, the reference will only be removed from the group. But if you delete a reference in smart group or combination group, the reference will be moved to trash due to not match the criteria. And you can use group set to organize your numerous group. I right click on my groups and choose create group set. Then you can drag the existing groups into the group set. And tag is another function to classify the references. Click on the plus icon here and give it a tag name and choose one of the tag holder and click on create tag you will see a new tag is created. Then you can select the existing references and drag them into the tag. Or you can also add a tag to a specific reference by select the reference, then switch to the edit tab on your right hand side, then click on the manage tags at the top. Uh, you can choose from the existing tags or create new tags for this reference. Uh, the next function is find duplicates. If you have multiple ways for collecting references, you may accidentally import the same references in a library. Uh, you can use this function to reduce redundancy. Click on library, then find duplicates. If duplicate references are found, they will be displayed side by side like this. You can keep all the information in one record uh, and click on keep this record. The other one will be moved to trash. 
and you can modify the criteria for matching duplicates. Uh, go to the preferences setting, then click on duplicates. The default setting to compare references are based on author here and, and the title. Uh, you can modify the setting here. And finally, here are some personalized functions. The mark in front of each reference is used to indicate the, uh, whether the reference has been read or not. And the rating column allows you to use one to five stars to represent the importance. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate on my computer. You can follow my steps to practice. Okay, first, if you want to uh, create a custom group, please right click on my groups and choose create group. Then give it a group name. Then you can select the existing references and drag them into the group. The reference will be classified into this group. Or you can create small group to, automatically, or to automatically classify the references. Uh, sorry, in the pop-up window, give it a group name. Then set up the criteria. References will automatically classify into this group. And you can use group set to organize your numerous groups. Okay, set up the group set, then you can uh, drag the existing groups uh, under the group set. You can. And if you want to create the tag, uh, you can click on the plus icon here and give it a tag name and choose one of the tag color and click on create tag. Then you can select the uh, existing references and drag them into the tag to classify it. Or you can select a specific uh, reference and switch to the edit tab on your right hand side and click on manage tags to create a tag for a specific reference. And to find duplicates, you can click on library then find duplicates. If duplicate references are found, they will display side by side like this. If you click on keep this record, the other one will be moved to trash. And finally, uh, the mark in front of each reference is used to indicate whether the reference has been read or not. And uh, the rating column allows you to use one to five stars to represent the importance. Uh, you can use this function to sort or rank your library. And if you didn't see the mark, the, the read status mark and the rating column here, uh, you can go to the preferences setting. In Windows system, it's under edit. In Mac system, it's under the NO logo on your upper left corner. And open the preferences, click on display fields, and you can choose one of the column as uh, read on read status, and one of the column as rating. And these two columns will show in your NO library. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Uh, NO can be combined with your academic writing. You can cite the references you collect. Uh, it will automatically create a citation and reference format. Uh, we use the NO toolbar in your Microsoft Office Word to cite. Uh, the NO toolbar is also known as CWYW, stands for Cite You Write. Let's start from insert citation. Okay, uh, open your NO library, select the references you are going to cite. Uh, you can select multiple references at once. Then open the Word document, click on the place you are going to insert citation. Then switch to the NO toolbar and click on insert citation, then insert selected citations. The citation and references will be in the uh, Word document. And you can expand the style drop-down menu to switch the citation style. Take numbered for example. You will see the citation and references are switched to the numbered style. To demonstrate on my computer, uh, first, open your NO library, select the reference you are going to cite, then open the Word document, uh, click on the place you are going to insert citation, then switch to the NO toolbar and click on insert citation, and insert selected citation. Okay, you will see the citation and reference in the Word document. And you can also uh, insert multiple citations at the same place. Uh, the first step, you can uh, select multiple references in your NO library, thank you. Okay. Then, uh, 
back to the Word document, click on the place you are going to insert citation. Then in, uh, click on insert citation and insert selected citations. Okay, you will see the citations and the references in the document. And you can expand the style drop down menu here to switch the citation style. Take numbered, for example. You will see the citation and the references are switched to the uh, numbered style. Okay, let's move on to the next function, edit and manage citation. Uh, if you want to remove or edit the citations, uh, please use this function. Do not delete or correct the citation you added from EndNote with Word function. Uh, first, if you want to remove the citation, click on Edit and Manage Citations. In the pop-up window, look for the citation you are going to remove. Then expand the drop-down menu here and choose Remove Citation. And you will see the citation and reference will be removed. Uh, if the citation is not at the end of the sentence, uh, the author name should be in front of the parentheses. And you can also use this function to fix it. Click on Edit and Manage Citations. In the pop-up window, select the citation you are going to edit. Then expand the formatting drop-down menu here and choose Display as Author before parentheses. And click on OK. You will see the modification. In some citation styles, the cited page number is required to appear in the citation. Uh, you can also use this function to add the cited page. Click on Edit and Manage Citations. In the pop-up window, select the citation you are going to add cited page. Then enter the cited page in the page file and click on OK. You will see the cited page in the citation. Demonstrate on my computer. Okay, first, if you want to remove the citation, click on Edit and Manage Citations. Then look for the citation you are going to remove. Then expand the drop down menu here and choose Remove Citation and click on OK. You will see the citation and reference will be removed. And if you want to move the author name before the parentheses, click on Edit and Manage Citations. And in the pop up window, uh, select the citation you are going to edit. Then expand the formatting drop down menu here and choose display as author before the parentheses and click on OK. And you will see your modification here. And if you want to add the cited page, uh, click on edit and manage citation again. Se select the citation and enter the page uh, the cited page number in page file and click on OK. You will see the cited page in the citation. Okay, the last function of this part, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, remove the endnote field code. The citation and references added from endnote have the endnote field code. As we mentioned, you cannot edit it by word function. If you need to do so, uh, please remove the endnote field code first. In Windows system, click on convert citations and bibliography, then convert to plain text. In Mac system, click on tools, then convert to plain text. Uh, this function will create a new unsaved document without any field code. Uh, it's a simple Word file. You can use the Word function to edit it. But please remember, if you still need to use the uh, any function to add or delete citations, you have to use the original Word document with the any field code. Uh, so please keep the original Word document safely. Uh, demonstrate on my computer. Okay, in Windows system, click on. In Windows system, click on Convert Citations and Bibliography, then Convert to Plain Text. In Mac system, please click on uh, Tools, then Convert to Plain Text. Okay, it will create a new unsaved document without any field code. Uh, it's a simple Word file. You can use the Word function to edit it. But please remember, if you still need to use the uh, annual function to add or delete the citation, uh, you have to use the original Word document with the annual field code. So please keep this document safely. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Uh, this part, I'm going to introduce three bonus functions, includes Synchronize, Share Library, and Google Docs Site While You Write. Uh, these functions are based on annual online account. Okay, let's start from Synchronize. Synchronize allows you to maintain the consistency of library uh, content uh, across different computers. To activate Synchronize function, uh, please go to the Preferences setting. 
then click on sync and enable sync in the pop-up window if you don't have an annual online account please click on sign up to register one if you already have an annual online account uh, please type your email address and the password here and click on ok and finally if you check this option your library will sync automatically every 15 minutes or you can uh, if you didn't check sync automatically here you can manually sync your library by uh, click on sync configuration then sync now and if you want to sync this library to another computer uh, please you need to create a new blank library in that computer and use the same annual online account and follow the synchronized steps to the library will be synced to that desktop okay uh, now uh, it's it's a panel library in my office computer and I'm going to in, uh, demonstrate how to synchronize this library to the computer in this classroom now I, I have already created a new blank library in this uh, desktop and I need to go to the uh, preferences to activate the, the synchronize function uh, in Windows system the preferences is under edit the Mac system is under the annual logo on your upper left corner. Then click on sync. Then enable sync. If you don't have an annual online account, please click on sign up to register one. And I, uh, I already have an annual online account, so I type my email address and password here. And if I check this option, this library will sync automatically uh, every 15 minutes. Or I can uh, manually sync this library by click on sync configuration then sync now okay, the, the library in my office computer will be synced to uh, the computer in this classroom okay, the next function is share library uh, this function allows you to share and maintain references with others if you want to share your library to your friends, all of you need to have the annual online account and activate synchronize function. If you want to share your library, you should click on file, then share. In the pop-up window, uh, enter the email address you are going to share with. Uh, this email address should be registered as an annual online account. Then set up the permission and click on invite. Uh, you can share with up to 1000 account in annual 21. And those who are invited will receive an invitation later. Uh, they should click on accept the invitation, then log in their annual online account to complete the invitation. After accepting your invitation, they can open your shared library by click on file, open shared library. Then in the pop-up window, uh, they should choose your email address and click on open. They will open your shared library and here will show your email address. Uh, if they do some uh, modify in this library, they should click on sync status, then sync now to share the modification. Okay. Uh, okay, if I want to share this library to others, I should click on file, then share. Okay. Uh, in the pop-up window, uh, enter the email address I'm going to share with. Then set up the permission and click on invite. And those who are invited will receive the invitation late, later. They should click on accept the invitation and log in with their annual online account to complete the invitation. And if I want to open the library share with me, I can click on file, then open shared library. Okay, in the pop-up window, uh, choose the owner's email address and click on open. I will open the library share with me and here will show the owner's email address. If I modify this library, I should click on sync status and uh, sync now to share my, mod my modification. Okay, let's move on to the last function, Google Docs Sidewalk Write. Anno 21 provides Sidewalk Write add-on integration with Google Docs. Uh, if you want to use this add-on, uh, you need to have the annual online account and activate the uh, synchronized function first. And the first time, you need to install the uh, Sidewire Write add-on in your Google Docs by click on Extensions, Add-ons. 
then get add-ons then search for uh, annals that will write and choose the add-on provided by Clarivate and click on install after the installation uh, you can open this uh, add-on by click on extensions then annals that will write then open the server right panel will be on your right hand side. Uh, you can log in with your Anno Online account. Now you can start to use this add on. Uh, if uh, you can click on the place you are going to insert citation and choose the reference on your right hand side and click on insert citation, you will see the citation appear where you just clicked and click on update citations. The reference will be at the end of the Google Doc. And if you want to switch the citation style, please click on the setting icon here and choose citation style. Then search for the citation style and choose it. You will see your notification. And if you want to remove the citation, uh, you need to uh, move to the uh, manage citations tab on your right hand side and click on the pencil icon here. Then click on the garbage can icon, then choose remove. You will see the citation is removed. And click on update citations and bibliography. The reference will be removed too. But if you want to remove a single citation from multiple citations, uh, there will be a little difference. Uh, the first two steps are the same. Switch to the manage citations tab and click on the pencil icon here. And here will be a little difference. You need to expand the citation editor and select the citation you are going to remove. Then click on save. You will see the citation is removed. And again, click on update citations and bibliography. The reference will be removed too. And finally, uh, if you want to edit the citation, for example, to move the author name before the parenthesis, uh, you need to click on the citation and click on the pencil icon here. Then here you can manually edit this citation and click on OK. You will see your modification. Uh, let me demonstrate on my computer. Okay, first, if you uh, the first time you need to install this add-on by click on extensions there and add-on then get add-on to search for the server you write uh, provided by Clarivate. And after the installation, you can open this uh, server you write add-on by click on Extensions, and no survival right, then open. The survival right panel will be on your right hand side. And now uh, start from insert citation. Click on the place you are going to insert the citation and uh, select the reference on your right hand side. And click on insert citation. You will see the citations here, then click on update citations. It takes a little time to show the modification. Okay, the reference will be up at the, at the end of the Google Doc. And if you want to switch the citation style, click on the setting icon here and choose citation style. And you can search for the citation style and choose one of it. And you maybe need to wait for 10 seconds to show the modification. Okay, you see uh, your modification and if you want to remove the citation uh, you need to switch to the manage citations tab here and click on the pencil icon and click on the garbage can icon and choose remove the citation will be removed then click on update citations and bibliography the reference will be removed too in 10 seconds And if you want to uh, edit the citation, you should click on the citation and click on the pencil icon here. And here you can manually edit this citation. And click on OK. You will see your modification here. Okay, the last thing I want to share with you is that you can visit our library website, uh, click on research support, then uh, reference manager and notes. Here are some online tutorials and FAQs about EndNote. You can learn more about EndNote. 
and if you want to uh, know more about how to edit the citation style in your academic writing, we have an advanced online tutorial for you. And it's the end of the, our lecture. Uh, I appreciate your attention. I hope it will be helpful for you. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, it's welcome to contact with us uh, anytime in the future.